Hey, good morning, Discovery. How are you guys doing today? Hey, happy Sunday. We're so excited to have you guys here with us. And if you guys are catching us online, we welcome you. And if you guys are ready, let me have you guys stand up. Let's go ahead and worship Jesus this morning. Come on. Come on, church. Put your hands together. Come on. If you guys know the lyrics, come help us out. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see the mountain. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I'm safe with you. Come on, let's sing it out. So when I fight, I fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, and if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, for Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Come on, when all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Thank you, God. When all I see is the cross, God, you see. Sing this new song. Come on. Come 
from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. No, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave.
slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God just take a moment to just raise our hand if you are able. Can we just, in our own song, in our own time, can we just thank the Lord for everything that he has done, for all the great things. And if we need something from God, whether it's strength, whether it's joy, come on, let's just lift up his name. Jesus. Jesus, 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 you welcome me in this place, Jesus, Jesus, what a wonderful name you have, Jesus.
come before you today, God. We want to encounter you, Jesus, that we love you and we're worshiping you. And God, you have a beautiful name, the name of Jesus, that's ab- that your name is above every other name, Lord Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That at the name of Jesus, things change. When you come into a situation, when you come into us, God, and we surrender to you, God, you take over. You begin to do something unique, powerful, God. We just thank you that that we can come and worship and lift up the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And we love you, God. And we pray, Lord Jesus, God, that you would work in us today, Lord. We pray, God, that you would today just give us a greater boldness. We pray that you, God, would speak through your word to us, Lord Jesus, about our lives, Lord Jesus. That, God, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And that we want to live, Lord Jesus, believing and having faith for, for greater things, God, in our lives. And, and look forward with excitement and joy and hope because of you. Because you bring transformation. Because of who you are in our day-to-day lives, Lord Jesus. And we live out what we believe deeply. And I pray that, that God, in our belief, God, that, that, that as we are in relationship with you, Lord Jesus, as we're rooted in Christ, that there's a strong foundation and we begin to live powerfully and bold lives based upon who you are, Jesus. So speak to us today through your word, God. And we just thank you so much, God. We thank you so much in advance. I love you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, hey, as you guys are seated, I'd like to welcome everybody. Give somebody around you an air five, an air hug. Say, what's up? Good morning. Great to have you with us today. Hey, if you're a guest with us, I want to welcome you to Discovery. Thanks for being a part of our worship celebration today. We're just really glad to have you with us. I hope you picked up the the free gift on the way in. If you didn't, just please stop at the kiosk on the way out. We want to give that that free gift to you. Welcome. Thank you for being gathered with us today at Discovery Community Church. I encourage everybody in attendance inside the program you received on your way in, there's a little connect card. And so if you could fill out that connect card, um, that helps us to be able to get you more information about what's happening around Discovery. It helps us to know how to pray for you as there's a place on the back that you can write a prayer request. Um, and thanks in advance for filling that out. You can actually place that um, in at the giving station on your way out, uh, the double doors in the rear of the worship center. There's a little giving station. You can place that connect card in that wood box on your way out. Uh, If you have a contribution that you'd like to make to to Discovery Community Church, that would also be the place that that you can can do that. 
and and we want to present our offerings to the Lord in in worship as as giving and generosity is an expression of worship that that we are involved in and so I just want to take a minute and, and pray for the offering as we present that to God God thank you for the opportunity to, to give to you and we just thank you in advance that, that we can be faithful with what you've given to us and and we just want to be generous God so would you accept our offering that we're giving to you today we love you in Jesus name amen all right, hey, a couple of things happening around Discovery I want to let you know about. Today is is the start of our growth track in Vision 101, and um, it's also called Getting Started at Discovery. We want to help you to, to understand who Discovery is, and, and, and we'll just describe the church to you, our vision, a chance for some Q&A. Um, and we'd love to have you participate in getting started at Discovery. There's a free lunch, uh, and lunch is provided. So uh, thanks so much. If you want to stay afterwards and, and learn more about Discovery, uh, we'll be meeting in the children's ministry room. And so um, that's going to be set up and ready to go. I hope you, you plan on sticking around after service and, and learning more about Discovery Community Church. If you've started attended in, attending in the last 6 to 12 months or you've never participated participated in the growth track and you want to, um, you're invited to do that and, and stick around. Also next week, we have a special week as it is uh, our Vision Sunday uh, where we come once a year. We describe the vision to you, what we're shooting for in 2022. And then we're going to celebrate the vision immediately after service. We've got a, a the annual chili cook-off. And, and barbecue. So I hope you guys plan on, on, on coming to that after service next week. Uh, um, you can actually pick up tickets for it. It's also a fundraiser. The, the Chili Cook-Off is a fundraiser for our student ministry. And so it's $5 per person or $20 per family. And we just want to celebrate the vision next week and, and enjoy that time together. So it's a little bit of happening around Discovery. Today we're going to continue talking about vision. We're going to continue talking. Today I have a message called Greater Boldness. I encourage you to follow along in your programs that you received um, um, on the way in. There's a place to take some notes there. Um, and also, please do open your Bibles to Acts chapter 4 and 5 with us as we get into God's Word. This is you, or rather who you've become. You are who you've become because of your choices, circumstances, past, relationships, parents, or, or lack thereof. You, your life story up to this very second, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's how you've become who you are. This, however, is who you were created to be. Alive, complete, fully free. Who you are, deeply rooted in who God is. Using your gifts, talents, passion, and resources to be God's hands and feet in this world. This is the you you've caught a glimpse of in your best and worst times. This is the you that you've been created to be. The distance between these two yous sometimes feels impossible to travel. The process to bridge these two yous is called transformation. It's the way that God helps you go from who you've become to who He created you to be. It's sometimes painful, sometimes difficult, sometimes slow, sometimes welcomed, sometimes not, but it is always loving. It is always what God longs for. It is always for everyone, including you. Our church exists to help lessen that gap. Transformation is something only God can do, but our church can help to make what is undeniably spiritual as practical as possible. From what we teach, to the things we do, to when we meet, to who we do life with. We are committed to helping you grow, to helping you become who God created you to be. That's transformation. That's our church. All right, so we've got this theme we've been focused on called greater and, and just trusting God and believing God for greater. And today I want to talk about greater boldness. 
I remember a moment back um, in my high school days where I was, I was, I came into relationship with Jesus when I was a junior in, in high school, towards the end of my, my junior year. And, and this moment was, was kind of the start of, 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 the sen- of my senior year. And I was actually invited to, to be a part of like the, the senior pep rally. And, and they asked me to, 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 to speak and say something, you know, help, help with the pep rally, you know, at Maryville High School. Um, and, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And, and I, I stood up, and, and I, I remember just, uh, um, you know, just getting everybody excited and pumped up for the rally. And, like, are you guys ready to have a good time, man? You ready for senior year? Yeah, let's do this. And, and we're, having, we're having this rally. Well, then all of a sudden, there came an, an, a boldness in, in my heart and in my life. And I just began to, to give a shout out. I got to tell you, I am not the same guy any longer that I used to be. You guys knew the old Ben Taylor, but there's a, there's, a, there's a new Ben Taylor. And Jesus Christ has come and transformed my life. And I began to just share the gospel and, and, and share the good news of Jesus to, to all the high school at this, this pep rally. As this boldness just began to, to, to come forth from my life. And, and I, I, I thought, like, in the moment, like, I, I was going to have no more friends after this because... Because like no, none of my none of my friends were Jesus followers, and like like I used to like go out and party with with uh, uh, my high school classmates and do things I, I shouldn't have done, and 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 it, and they're now gonna like think completely different about me, and it was gonna be completely different. But to my surprise, when I was done, they actually kind of gave me a a, a standing ovation. And there was one guy in particular, Derek, and Derek came up to me and he said this at, at the end of that. He said, man, that, that was one of the boldest things I've ever seen in my life. And it was, it was kind of cool to, 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 to be a part of that. And, and that year, um, at my senior year in high school, there were over 100 students that came to know Jesus as a part of a, a, a ministry that we started on campus that that year. So it was awesome. Here's a question I want to ask you. When when has somebody been surprised by your boldness? When's the last time that, that you've said or done something that reflected a, a, a boldness? What is boldness anyways? Write this down. Boldness is behavior born out of belief. It's behavior born out of belief because what you and I believe deeply changes the way we act and we live. If, if you and I uh, uh, live in fear of criticism of, of others around us, we will live our lives tentatively. If you believe you're going to fail, you'll never take any risks with your life, and, and you'll live in your life in fear of, of failure, ne- always living extremely cautiously. But if you and I believe that the one true God is calling you, equipping you, loving you to to live a bold life, if you believe that, then that is something that you and I will begin to live out because boldness is behavior born out of belief. And we're going to study Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5 today. As, as you guys follow along in your Bibles and, and um, in, in the notes, I'm praying that God would work on your heart, that you and I would not be marked by weakness, that you and I would not, would, would not live with fear eroding our, our, our confidence and, and, and the boldness that we live with, and God would give us the ability to act without fear. And I want to show you amazing boldness as we get into this today. And we're going to start with a guy named Peter that is, is well known in, in, in the Bible. He was a guy that was often characterized with bold intentions, 
but timid actions. And, and we're going to see that. Peter declared boldly uh, at the Last Supper, listen, when all of these other losers turn against you, I'm not going to turn against you. He made a bold statement. He's like, he's like, these other guys will turn away, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to deny you, Jesus. And as the story unfolds, he denies three different times that he even knows Jesus once to a little schoolgirl. And, and he has timid actions, but, but he chose in, in it, in what we're going to see in Peter's story is a transformation. And I pray that same transformation is something that you and I experience. Because there was a moment Peter had where Jesus, after his resurrection, appeared to the disciples. And, and Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? And he and Peter was a transformed man as he responds, yes, I am. And Jesus looks him eye to eye and says, go and feed my sheep. I'm calling you. I'm equipping you to live your life boldly, to have a faith which you exercise and use in your life. In Acts chapter 3, we see that new boldness that Peter is going to begin to live with. And he is walking with John. And, and, and this story in the early church in, in Acts chapter 3. And as they walk into the temple, by the temple, they see a man that, that, has, that is lame, that hasn't been able to walk for 40 years, and he's outside, and everybody knows this guy because he has positioned himself, and he lives just outside the temple. So everybody knows him. Everybody recognizes him. And in a bold moment, Peter goes up to, Peter and John go up to him and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, walk. And in Acts chapter 3, we see the man stand up and begin to dance. The, 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 the man is, is miraculously healed. And this moment would stir a lot of controversy the, uh, in the early church. And, and some of the temple guards under the command of the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin was a group that were of religious leaders. And they didn't like Jesus because the Sanhedrin did not believe in resurrection in any way, shape, or form. That when this life is done, it's done. They didn't believe in resurrection. And Jesus came representing resurrection. And, and, and so they did not like the message of Jesus. They wanted to stop the message of, of Jesus. There was this great controversy rising. And, and Peter and John are, 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 are taken and on trial and they were asked this question, by what name and by what authority are you doing these things? Are you healing this, this man and, 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 and bringing healing about? Here's their bold response in Acts chapter 4, verse 8. It says this, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Now watch this boldness. Is this bold? Let me clearly state to all of you and to the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Now, that was bold, but this is really bold. The man you crucified by whom God raised from the dead. Man, now I, I cannot possibly overstate just how bold this was. The, the Sanhedrin did not like the message that Jesus represented, and they were, they were glad he was gone. 
and the foundation of their belief said resurrection was impossible. So Peter points right back and, and said, hey, you guys had the power to kill him, and you did. And he's alive today, resurrected from the dead. The name of Jesus, have you noticed, can stir controversy? I, I, I was asked to pray at a, at a town council meeting. And at that town council meeting, they, they said to me, you can pray however you want to, but you just can't pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And my response was, well, whose name am I supposed to pray in? And they're like, well, you can pray in God's name. You can pray in the Savior's name. You can pray in the big guy's name, in the Lord's name. But you can't pray in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus has stirred controversy ever since Jesus came and lived and was resurrected from the dead. And we see it here in the New Testament story. And, and the religious leaders just really couldn't believe what they were seeing. Verse 13, we see how they respond. The members of the council, they were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scripture they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. We see that God uses ordinary, everyday people like, you know, Peter and John, like normal people, ordinary people. God takes ordinary people and he uses them in extraordinary ways. And that word ordinary literally translated it's the word idiotis in the greek literally translated means idiot and and, and it is describing like like you know lack of 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 training you know i went to to school in springfield missouri bible college in springfield missouri and and i had a lot of friends from the south and and I loved them. Like they're 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 just really fun people to to hang around with and and be with. But I kind of figured something out I didn't know in the, in, in in the beginning, and that is when when one of them says, "Well, bless your heart." Like I thought they were really meant, "Well, bless your heart." And so, like, I, I, I didn't know it at the time, but I, I told the, this family, you know, from the South, like, like uh, I went to, um, I, I, you know, I actually tried to, I, I staged a fight in order to impress a girl, thinking, like, like, like maybe she'll like me more because I, like, staged this fight. To which they said, well, bless your heart which I found out later on really means you're nothing but an idiot. <laughs> when you say, well, well, bless your heart. And, and, and I was. <laughs> so the liter very literal translation here is these guys were amazed and couldn't believe the boldness of these idiots. And here's the deal. If you're the best of the best, the brightest of the bright, I've got great news for you. God can use you. It's just that he specializes in using ordinary people just like me and just like you. And God can raise up within you and I a boldness that, that's a greater boldness that we can live with in our lives. And I want to give you three ways that you and I can have a greater boldness. Number one is this, bold speaking. Bold speaking. I mean, the problem was there was a guy walking and dancing that everybody knew and so the religious leaders had to be very careful how they dealt with Peter and John. And, and we get to see their inner dialogue in verse 16 about what to do with this situation. And in verse 16, here's what it says. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. 
Everybody living in Jerusalem knows that they've done an outstanding miracle. And we cannot deny it. I love that part. That, that we, like the, the evidence of the miracle working power of Jesus Christ is undeniable. The, 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 he is, is working. He is, is, is moving. And I love that, that God does something that's, that's just so obviously God that it's undeniable. It's why I love testimonies and people sharing that, hey, God has transformed my life. I used to live this way. Now I live this way because Jesus, God, has, has just transformed my life because it's the evidence of God working and transforming lives. And he's been doing it for over 2,000 years. He's been taking ordinary people, transforming their lives and giving them an extraordinary boldness with which you and I can live with in our lives. So what happens next? Verse 17, to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men, Peter and John, to no longer speak to anyone in this name. You're not allowed to speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's see how that goes over. Verse 18. Not, you're not allowed to teach or speak in the name of Jesus. Now, Peter and John replied, judge for yourselves whether it's right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. In other words, we believe so deeply it's so much inside of us. We have seen Jesus resurrected from the dead. We've heard Jesus' teachings. It's transformed us to the very core. And we can't help but speak in his name. And we have to obey God in this. Like we have to, to, to listen to God and obey him. So if you threaten us, we're going to keep speaking all the more louder. And, and they just declare, hey, we're going to speak boldly that, that our words are going to proclaim the good news of Jesus because our sins have been forgiven. And we love Jesus, and we're going to speak his name. We see some great examples throughout the Bible of men and women of God that chose to obey God rather than man, that chose to speak boldly. Perhaps my favorite example of this is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel. And, and in their story, they were faced with a fiery furnace. And the king said to them, hey, you better bow down and worship the, this image of gold that I've set up to myself as a God, and you, you need to, to bow down and worship me, or we're going to throw you into the fiery furnace. You're going to die today if you don't bow down and worship me. And here's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said in response. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. I want you to notice something. They speak respectfully in the moment that they stand up for what is right. I think a lot of times in 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 Christian circles, in church circles, that 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 the voice that the world hears coming from the church is is one that is that is cynical, is is one that is disrespectful. Listen, we stand up and we obey God rather than man. 
but we do it respectfully. They, they honored him as they, they, they said, your majesty. And then they go on to say, even if God doesn't rescue us from the fiery furnace, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Doesn't matter what you do. That, that, that we're gonna we're gonna be bold. We're gonna continue to 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 speak boldly and and stand boldly for the name of Jesus Christ. He's gonna rescue us, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow down. I love it. Listen, you and I can use words of boldness for Jesus, or we can use words of boldness for the world, for Satan. I don't know about you, man, but I want to stand up for Jesus Christ and have a boldness in my words, in the way that I speak, and I stand up for God. And you and I can actually begin this process of, of speaking boldly. I just want to encourage you to speak boldly to yourself. To stand up for Jesus Christ to yourself and your thought life. Because a lot of times we start to get off track in our thinking. And when we start to get off track in our thinking, we've got to declare boldly to our thoughts and our faith and our heart that, that, that I'm going to stand up for Jesus Christ, that I'm not going to bow down before the idols of the world. And we actually uh, have a boldness in our heart, and our spirit, and our attitude with ourselves that extends to our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers. And you and I, man, we can be used to speak boldly. I just hope that before we leave Discovery Community Church today, that we'll say something encouraging, life-giving, building, boldness to somebody else today that will lift them up and encourage them because we speak life and not death and we're some of the most boldest encouragers on planet earth we learn it from the early disciples bold speaking there's a second thing we're going to see uh, about how we can live boldly and have a greater boldness and that is you and i can learn to pray boldly we can pray bold prayers. I read the, the, the funny story of a pastor that noticed a, a cat up in the front yard in his tree. And he was actually up there for a couple days. And, and so the cat would, would, wouldn't come down and, and, and something was wrong. And so the pastor tried to coax the cat down with some, some milk and the cat just would not come out of the tree. And the limbs of the tree were kind of kind of thin. And so the, the pastor decided, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie one of the branches to the bumper of my Jeep and pull forward a little bit to bend the tree branch down so I can actually reach up and, and, and get the poor little cat down. So as he was doing it and as he was pulling his Jeep back, the cord that he tied broke. Boom! And the tree branch flung. And the cat goes flying out of his front yard, and he can see the cat no more. He's like, oh, I hope that went well. <laughs> and uh, interestingly enough, a couple days later, the pastor was walking along, and he walked by the pet store, and he saw a woman that uh, attended his church. And she was in there buying some cat food. And he went up to her, and he said, well, you don't even own a cat. How in the world are you, are, uh, why, why are you buying some cat food? And she said, Pastor, you'll never believe it. Pastor said, try me. My daughter has been begging me for a cat and begging me. And I told her, if you pray for a cat and God gives you a cat, then you can have a cat. And she ran out on the backyard and she was praying for a cat. And out from heaven flies this cat that lands directly in front of her while she's praying so she can have a cat. <laughs> I don't know why she would keep the cat, but... <laughs> 
Bold prayers. You and I can have bold prayers. Listen, what are you praying for? Does what you're praying for reflect a faith that trusts God for the bigger things? Are you praying with the faith that, that, that trusts God and, and believes that he answers prayer? Are you praying very small prayers all the time? Listen, God delights in every prayer we bring to him. But I want to encourage you to begin to ask God for miracles. I want to encourage you to begin to pray with a bold prayers that will reflect a faith that you live with. Let's look at the story of Peter and John. Because Peter and John were in front of the Sanhedrin. They were speaking boldly. There was undeniable evidence of healing. They were told not to, to speak in the name of Jesus. Verse 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people, and they reported to all the chief priests and elders had said to them, they threatened us, they said, don't ever speak in this name again. Now check out their bold response. When they heard this, what did they do? They raised their voices together in prayer to God. I love that. I love that the, that the church, the people of God, upon hearing, the, the, they said to, to Peter and John, don't, sh don't speak in this name. Let the church begin to pray together. Listen, there's a, there's a community, there's a community impact that, that you and I can have when we're standing together in prayer with others around us that all of a sudden we start to have an exponential faith because where I may struggle to have faith for something, you come along and, and you stand in faith with me. And together as we pray, our faith rises for, for greater things together. And we begin to join and stand together as a church that worships, as a church that prays. And in verse 29, it says this, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants, watch this, to speak your word with what? Great boldness. What do they do? They pray for more boldness when they are already freakishly bold. And I, like, look at it objectively and I go, like, isn't boldness what just got you arrested? <laughs> well, it was. And they prayed for more boldness. Have you ever prayed for boldness to your faith? Have you ever prayed that, that God would raise up within you a spirit that, 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 that is strong, a spirit that, that is bold? We see them do this in this story of the early church that they are praying for even more boldness. The second thing we actually see them praying for is they pray for miracles. They have the faith to pray for miracles. Look at it in verse 30 and 31. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. Listen, some of you may go, Pastor Ben, I'm not naturally a confident person. I'm not naturally, like I have a lot of t timidity to my life. Well, so do I. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, when the Holy Spirit comes in me and begins to move in my heart and in my life, there comes forth from my life a boldness that is produced by God that I can live with. That's not my own power and strength. And God begins to move. And when I pray for people to be healed and when I pray for miracles, it's through the power and strength of, that the Holy Spirit gives me. 
to be able to pray and 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 have a, a, a boldness about my life we see in the pages of scripture stories of of men and women of God that learn to pray bold prayers that learn to ask for miracles my favorite is in Joshua when um, um, Joshua is facing this situation where he needs more time. He needs more daylight as he's engaged in a battle. And he makes, the, and he asks this incredible thing that time would stop. We read about it in Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through and 14. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O sun, stand still over Gibeon, O moon, over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped. And in verse 14, it says, Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Man, you want to talk about a bold prayer? That's a bold prayer. And, and God responds and God answers. And, and there's this amazing moment in, in the story of Scripture as God fights for his people Israel. A lot of times I like to put my name in, in, in the blanks as, as, as it helps create a boldness in my life. That surely the Lord is fighting for Discovery Community Church. That surely the Lord is fighting. Put your name in the blank. That as you and I are praying and asking God for miracles and, and praying for a boldness that we can live with in our life and beginning to learn to pray boldly in our lives, that the Lord is fighting for us. We learn to speak boldly we learn to pray boldly there's a third boldness that we see in peter and john and that is a bold obedience we look at how john and peter spoke boldly to the religious leaders they were thrown into prison for preaching in the name of jesus they spoke boldly to the sanhedrin and preaching the good news of jesus and then in chapter 5, verse 17 through 20, we see a bold obedience. Then the high priest and all of his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. And the angel said, go stand in the temple courts and tell people the full message of this new life. So the angel rescues them and then says, hey guys, go back to doing what you were doing at the time you were arrested and put in prison. Boldly declare the good news of Jesus Christ. And then that, that takes an incredible amount of, of, of boldness to, to obey. In my life, every single time that God uses my obedience, it, it, it's in a moment that, that, that there's opposition. Obedience becomes challenging in the moment we experience the greatest opposition to our faith in Jesus Christ. And, and, and I've seen that over and over again. When I started as pastor of Discovery Community Church, Lord of Life at the time in 2006, there were people that said, Pastor Ben, the church is only 20 people. It's not going to make it. It's not going to survive. Well, that was 2006, and here we are gathered today. I was pastor for eight months, and, and God declared that God is going to give us a building in the center of Gilbert. We were meeting in an industrial park that, that, that nobody in the community knew about. And we had to, if we're going to be a church that impacts our community, that, that we've got to believe that God is going to give us a facility in the center of our community. And God has done it. 
But there was opposition all along the way. Pastor Ben, we're too small. There's, there's no way we're going to be able to do it. There's no way we're going to be able to, it's a $2 million project. There's no way we're not going to be able to do it. But with God, all things are possible. And when we have a boldness to our faith and a belief and a trust in God, all things are possible. So we see, uh, and I just want to say this continues to be a miracle church. I can't wait to share with you next week in Vision Sunday about what God is going to do at Discovery Community Church in 2022 and 2023 and years to come. I hope you're with us next week for that special Sunday. So we see Peter and John go back to preaching the good news of Jesus. And in verses 27 through 29, we, we see the story unfold. The, the apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God. We must obey God. And we see them over and over again uh, do something profound that they obey God. Did you know that you and I will obey what we revere the most? And if you and I revere money more than we do God, then we will live our lives in the pursuit of money and not in the pursuit of God is number one in our heart. Money's necessary. But, but number one in our heart and our life, we will obey what we revere the most. And so for you and I to revere God and you and I to, to, to live our lives and in every way, shape, and form for him is, is how we learn to o obey. Jesus said, if you truly love me, that you will obey my commandments, that our obedience is directly connected to our love. And it's what you and I revere in our lives the most. And God wants to be number one. And in and, and Matthew 10, 28, he said this, Do not fear those who kill the body, but that cannot kill the soul. He's saying don't fear that, that, that you obey God. Jude 17 through 20 says, My dear friends, remember the warning you were given by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, they told you that near the end of time, selfish and godless people would start making fun of God. Have we seen that? That the, the people make fun of God. And now these people are already making you turn against each other. They think only about this life and they don't have God's spirit. Dear friends, keep building on the foundation of your, of your most holy faith as the Holy Spirit helps you to pray. The foundation of your life, God says, that's me. And you and I will obey what we revere the most, and we want to live in boldness out of a faith that makes a difference in the world that we live in. What is boldness? It's behavior born out of belief. That what we believe deeply, we will live out. I'm going to end with this. Remember the guy, Derek, the, the, at the end of the pep rally that that, that came up to me and said, hey, that's the most bold thing I think I've ever seen in my life. I actually saw Derek about 15 years later. And, and I, I saw him in a public setting and, 
and he came came up to me and he says, "Hey, you're 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 that guy. You're you're Ben Taylor, right?" I said, "Yeah." And he said, "I remember that day that you stood up in the pep, pep rally and and you you told us about Jesus." That was a really cool day. I said, "Yeah." He went on to describe to me about some extremely difficult circumstances in his life, being divorced, being went on a list of just really difficult times. And he said, I can't believe I'm seeing you today. And I'm in the midst of all of this in my life. And I said to him, Derek, today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day you're going to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And he started to cry. And I prayed with him. And today he's following Jesus, loving Jesus, and Jesus is bringing a transformation in his life. You and I can live with a boldness in the way we speak, in the way that we obey, in the way that we pray. Would you stand? Let's do it. God, I thank you so much, God, that your word challenges our faith, that, that, God, we can live with a boldness in our life. And just pray, Lord Jesus, that, God, you would help us, Lord Jesus, to be able in our lives, God, to um, obey you, live boldly in our obedience, live boldly in our prayers, live boldly, God, in, in the things that we say. That, that God, that I, I believe the world that we're living in needs light, that, that it needs light in darkness, that, that it needs the church, the men and women of God to be raised up, to, to live their lives boldly in faith, Lord Jesus, declaring the good news, speaking boldly, obeying boldly, praying boldly. God, we pray that our faith would rise today. That our faith, Lord, would increase and that we, Lord Jesus, would, would learn in our lives to obey God, to obey God and, 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 and revere you as number one in our life, Lord Jesus. Help us to live and stand up for you in boldness. How many of you guys would just ask God today, as we've seen in scripture, that they prayed for boldness. And you would say, Pastor Ben, I want to pray for boldness today. On the count of three, if you want to pray for boldness, just raise your hand. One, two, three. God, I just thank you for people that have heard your word today and are desiring boldness in their lives. Would you just give us, Lord Jesus, uh, the, the sense, Lord Jesus, of, of that we can obey you, that we can live with the boldness in our lives and, and Lord Jesus, that, that God, we would learn, Lord, to, to, to be bold in the way that we live out our lives. We're asking you for it. Give us opportunities to share your love with other people, God, this week. Give us opportunities, God, to declare the message of the good news. Give us prayers that are bold. Give us, Lord Jesus, obedience that is bold. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody said. Hey, thanks for gathering with us today. Love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, if you're come, going to get getting started at Discovery, we're going to start in about 10 minutes in the children's room. Bless you guys. Feels like we're in the dead of winter, waiting on something better.